Hi guys. Well, my old buddy's gone home. Had a very pleasant two weeks with his company. Uh, I think <laughs> I think we did a little bit too much of that now and again. But uh, it was a good two weeks. I didn't get much chance to come out here just the once, which was enough for a very short video. And this probably as well. Uh, He's a bit of a filler, just to keep things rolling. Um, I tell you what, today is ridiculous. It's going to be nearly 80 degrees. Quite a lot of you folks are getting the same phenomenon, uh, except the Pacific West, Northwest. Uh, just two or three days of ridiculous heat. I don't mind actually, because the shop cools off overnight and it's bearable out here. What is it at the moment? can't even read. Ah, about 66 I think, which is very acceptable. <laughs> uh, by the end of the week, temperatures are going to plummet again and uh, we'll then be into some much colder weather, which then puts me on a timer as we head towards uh, absolute frozen nuts when the shop is less usable. It's one extreme or the other, and summer has been basically very, very hot. Made it very difficult out here. And uh, I don't know, by late December, January, might be a struggle for being too cold. So I must try and get my butt in gear and get a few things done. Anyway, babbling, mumbling, <laughs> the usual. Um, oh, thanks to Dale Pratt. For giving me a shout out. He got his t-shirt. Um, I got mine. I haven't worn it out here yet and I probably won't if I'm making a mess. But uh, I got my own one. Quite pleased with the way that turned out. Um, many thanks to everybody who got one or more. I think... Uh, oh, who was it? Gosh. I've forgotten all of a sudden, somebody bought more than one. So as I said in another video, a small campaign, but uh, really better than I expected. And I thank everybody for pitching in and uh, getting a t-shirt. Um, well, I'll try and, try and remember to put a link in down there for Dale Pratt. He's fairly new to the channels uh, compared to some of us, but uh, he's got some very interesting stuff to show, including knife making and well worth a look and I think he'll probably uh, increase his sub count fairly quickly I must remember to put that link in um, regarding Adam a bomb uh, commiserations to him poor guy's lost his dear Stella his dog of what 12 12 years very sad to hear that for him, like so many people, the dog is, or the pet, whatever, is, is a member of the family. So commiserations, Adam. Um, hell of a wrench. I know you'll cope somehow, but it's never easy. Um, so I'm mentioning it because some people may not have known, although I think everybody likely to drop by my little channel would have been to uh, Adam's. Um, so I think that's about it. I'm just doing a couple of things. As I say, it's a filler, a bit of a cheat. I started looking at the Champion compressor that uh, I got along with the Hobart and I'm hoping I can get it working. But the priority is to check the uh, receiver tank. have to look inside that and see if it's safe to use. So that's going to take me quite a while. Uh, it involves a bit of bending, which is bad news, but I'm going to try and get it functional. And I think I said in the clip, put a couple of two pairs of uh, casters on the wooden frame it's uh, attached to. Um, the other thing was just looking at a, an extremely bent lead screw, shall we call it, for a 48 inch sash lamp. How it got bent like that, I don't know. I'm blaming the removal people at some point. 
Uh, it would take a hell of a whack to get it bent like that, but I think it's easiest for me to make a new one even if it's not out of really hard material. So I think that'll be the next fairly quick project on the uh, lathe. But I've got no Acme thread cutting tools. I'll have to grind something to do the job. Hopefully well enough to be accurate. Um, and it occurred to me the other day, I, I had a very, a, a lot of help from this uh, old buddy of mine. We got some very important yard work done, but I totally overdid it. Uh, so apart from the back and the hip, I pulled a groin muscle. Adductor magnus, if anybody wants to know. <laughs> the origin uh, tendon, and uh, it hurts like hell. It's getting better, but uh, why I mention that is I was aware, made the comment to somebody the other day, you know when you see kids and you say, God, look at that, he's had a growth spurt. And I think I've had an age spurt. <laughs> oh, I try not to make a big deal out of it because nobody, nobody enjoys hearing about, hearing about other people's um, health problems. But uh, seriously, it is, it is a big limiting factor and I think I'm stuck with a lot of it. If I do too much, I pay a high price. And that, again, I think is going to influence my shop time. I don't want to fade off the channel completely, but uh, I think it's going to have its effect, uh, inevitably. But we'll soldier on, try and get a bit done. If it becomes less, fre less frequent, so be it. I'll hope to still stay uh, in the group, and uh, I certainly check all my subscriptions. Keep an eye on you other guys. Make sure you're behaving yourselves. <laughs> All right, anyway, no tail end on this one. Uh, so I'll just say now many thanks for my subscribers. I'm pretty amazed. And uh, I look forward to seeing you fairly soon. And thanks for watching. Excuse the uh, handheld. I'm just having a first look at this uh, compressor that was. Uh, acquired at the same time as the old Hobart. I think I mentioned about it, but I got my uh, buddy to help pull it in the shop here. It's incredibly heavy. It's on this wooden base, and I think I'll probably get four caster wheels so it can move around. Anyway, this is basically a first inspection. Uh, it's a Champion Command Air. I've looked at the motor plating, it's three horse, 220 volt, single phase, and I've just got the uh, cover off here just to look. And it seems this is not easy single handed. Seems to be a tight all right. Make a few noises that are encouraging. And amidst all my other junk, oh, there's the uh, pressure switch. Got to check that. Going to have to check the motor. But most importantly, going to have to check this uh, air receiver. I think what I'll have to do here is to crack these joints. Try and get a light. Well, get my uh, endoscope down in there and see if it's remotely viable. Uh, if it isn't, I've got to work out a way to uh, set it up on another receiver. So anyway, that's plenty to be doing, going on with. <laughs> see? Yeah, needs a new sponge on the cylinder tops. So I'm hopeful that it'll work. It might give me a bit more uh, CFMs. Remains to be seen if it works. So that's one thing on the project list. One other thing on the list at the moment is I can't get this all in frame but this is a four foot 
sash lamp or sash cramp as it's called in England made by the record company very handy and uh, this end you've got a slider with a taper pin to set up your movable jaw anyway I've got two of these, which makes sense, usually two sash cramps. Uh, but surprisingly, since, let me get that propped up, surprisingly since moving in here, I've been in this place uh, 14 years. <laughs> Never had a need to use these. And my wife was working on some stuff and needed a couple of large clamps so I thought, oh yes, I know what'll do that. <laughs> and then I found that this one was somewhat buggered. <laughs> oh dear. That, um, <clears throat> there's the uh, female thread. That goes through. And then this part, I'm not going to put it all back together. This part here has a pinned collar so that the thread when it's used moves this in and out so that's your lockup but now we've got this bend and I'm really wondering how the removal people could have thrown this around to put a bend on it like that I think you can see it's pretty extreme um, and the problem is twofold one is this is fairly hard material. Secondly, the thread has been stretched one side, compressed the other. I thought about putting this in the leg vise and heating it and trying to get it straight. But uh, two aspects to that are firstly the thread, which I've mentioned. The thread's going to be distorted, even if it's straightened out, I suspect. Secondly, getting that absolutely true so that it'll go through the uh, female thread here because he wants to go in that far not that far so on uh, this this t-bar was in the end just cut the cut the little pommel off that so that's where we are with that and I want to make it work again but it's the sort of thing that isn't really used very much and uh, the sizing on this let me check my notes sizing on this is really weird the uh, it's 12 TPI Acme thread right well that's that's okay but the diameters, um, thread diameter is 545, major diameter. This bit down here is 440. This bit up here is, uh, what is it, 68, 680, something like that. Seems a strange set of dimensions. Well, that is unimportant for size. This end probably not too critical. I want to use the same collar. So uh, that's slightly more critical. So what are we going to do? I'm going to find some material. Unfortunately I've got no 4140 on hand. I will probably have to use what I got. Usual thing. And that all together is it's about 8 inch. So I've got to find some material, turn it down and then do some threading prior to which I'll have to grind a, um, an Acme cutting tool. So it's a bit of a fiddle but I want to get this thing working again and even if I don't use really hard material, this, this possibly was even heat treated, I don't know, it's pretty... Uh, pretty hard. I will have to sacrifice hardness for function and 
Seeing as these are not used very much, like this is the first time in 14 years, I don't suppose softer material will matter too much, particularly if the uh, thread is greased. So there you are, that's on the list. I hope to get something set up in the lathe soon and get that done and uh, do some more checking out on the compressor. That's where we are at the moment.